Here is Dennis Kolodin for you. <laughs> Talking about his framework called You, his daily work fits to a fury of bits and a Rust blockchain speed trading crew. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Denis Kalodin, and uh, I work at Exonum uh, project uh, in Bitfury company. Uh, and today, uh, I'm here to introduce, to show you something special. I will show you how to create front-end application uh, uh, completely with Rust and no online of JavaScript code. Our agenda for today is quite simple. Uh, at first, uh, I, will have, uh, I will show uh, you what is you. Uh, we will have an introduction about it. And after that, uh, I show you how to create a minimal application using th this framework. Uh, later, uh, we will talk about what you should know to use this framework effectively. And in the last topic, uh, I will uh, explain and show you how I created the framework from the first steps and to the final state, which you can see on the GitHub today. Okay, let's start with introduction of you and a minimal application. Uh, you is a ready-to-use web assembly framework. Uh, I created it uh, half a year ago. Uh, I released it uh, at uh, 16 December of, of last year. And it, it was exactly four days uh, before my birthday. <laughs> and the commu uh, community gave a great present, a uh, great gift for me. Uh, the project uh, col uh, collected 4,000 stars for today. Uh, it's open source, and it lives under two licenses which are popular in Rust community, MIT for uh, commercial uh, purposes and Apache license for uh, GPL-compatible uh, projects. Uh, you can follow this link, uh, which you can see on the screen, on the top of the slide, uh, to get more information about this. The blazing feature of the framework is a JSX-like templates, which uh, let uh, you put HTML templates directly into your code, inside Rust code. Uh, and it, it looks like a React uh, JS uh, framework. But uh, so, uh, some features I was inspired by Elm. Uh, it supports pure WebAssembly compilation target, uh, and uh, you could compile uh, front-end application without M scripting into a pure uh, web as, uh, assembly uh, bytecode. And uh, you could find many examples on the project's page. OK, let's start with a minimal application. Um, at first, you, you should create a simple struct. Uh, I, I call it model with one uh, field uh, called value. And uh, to turn it into a, uh, into a user interface component, uh, you should implement a component trait. Uh, the, uh, this trait uh, could, uh, could create instances of, this, uh, of the component, and that's why it has to contain create method, uh, which returns a new component instance. Uh, uh, now we can add behavior to this component because uh, we have a struct, and now we, uh, we should add uh, messages. Uh, uh, we could add an uh, enumeration with uh, different uh, events inside, and this uh, uh, events leads changes of the model. Uh, it contains uh, an update method of, this of the component trait, and in case of increment event, it, uh, it will add uh, one to a value field. And in case of decrement, uh, it will subtract one from uh, models field. Uh, there, uh, there is should render flag, which trigger, trigger a rendering of this component. 
uh, and uh, if you set it to true, the companies will be rendered again, and if you return false, the, render, uh, the rendering will be skipped, and uh, it is uh, useful if you want to change uh, hidden uh, fields of your model. Uh, let's look how to create uh, look and feel of our brand new component. So to, uh, uh, to implement, um, uh, to, uh, to make it uh, renderable, uh, you, uh, you have to implement a render, uh, renderable trait which contains view method, and this method uh, should return virtual DOM tree. And it's simple to make it with a uh, special macro, uh, which included in the framework, HTML macro. Uh, it uh, allows you to use HTML notation uh, inside the Rust code, and you, you could put HTML tags directly into your code. Uh, you can uh, also see uh, the click handlers uh, in the buttons, and they send messages uh, into update function uh, back when you click on this uh, button in the browser. Uh, to start, uh, start this application, uh, you have uh, to add main function, and uh, you should uh, at first initialize th this framework, uh, create a context. I created uh, empty context here and uh, used uh, unit type but uh, you could create more uh, complex uh, contexts if you need more services. I also created an uh, application instance here and mount it into uh, to the real DOM element. I used a uh, body tag, but you could uh, mount uh, the application to uh, any element uh, of the DOM tree. And start the loop. Uh, before I show you the result, how, how it looks, uh, how it looks like, uh, let's see how to build this application. Uh, to build uh, this code, uh, you uh, you need a special compilation uh, target, uh, and you could install uh, in install it with Rust app tool. Uh, and web assembly unknown target. Uh, you also may need an uh, M, M script and target, and it, it might come in handy. Uh, and I, I will describe why it's why it, you may need M script a little later. I also recommend you to install Cargo Web Tool. Uh, it helps you to watch, build, and run your code. Uh, create a binary create and put code uh, I showed you into a into source folder of uh, your project and run it with Cargo Web Tool. Uh, uh, set uh, necessary target. I use pure web assemb uh, assembly target without M scripting uh, because it, it uh, works faster. Uh, and the Cargo Web Tool will bootstrap a web server for your application. And uh, it will look like this. Uh, you can see in the browser the application, and uh, you could uh, push these buttons uh, and uh, see that uh, DOM tree will be updated on every uh, event. Uh, let's dip, uh, deep into extra features. You should uh, know to use uh, the framework effectively. Uh, components live in a context environment, and con uh, context is a shared state. Uh, you could add requirements for the context. Uh, even a, a simple button could require something like a timer or network connection. Uh, for example, uh, we may need uh, AWS connection for our component and uh, an impl implementation of uh, required trade. Uh, we should implement it to satisfy the requirements of our company. You, you uh, couldn't compile this code if uh, your context uh, doesn't fit your uh, requirements. Uh, you contain some sources which you could use in the context. 
timeout uh, service which set, uh, uses set timeout a function of JavaScript and will send a single message uh, when timer elapsed uh, interval service uh, which uses set interval function of JavaScript and will send a sequence of uh, messages to your component. Uh, fetch let you connect, uh, connect to HTTP servers and WebSocket service uh, let you connect uh, by a WebSocket protocol uh, to your web server. Mm, you also could implement uh, your own service and even publish it on Create IO and use it from the central repository. Uh, you then could uh, put components in, uh, directly into templates. Uh, this feature uses row uh, types without any wrappers. Uh, you could use I put a counter into the template, like uh, you can do in if, if you're familiar with React.js and JS6 uh, temp uh, template language. Uh, and component could contain properties. Properties is a simple struct. Uh, use pure Rust types inside templates, uh, set uh, types uh, you need, and uh, you could use these types in the template. And also you have to implement default trait because all properties are optional now. Uh, also the framework uses a virtual DOM representation and first view method call rendering, uh, rendering uh, virtual DOM over real DOM tree. And the second rendering call creates a patch which applied to the existing DOM tree and only uh, changed things uh, will be changed on real DOM tree. Uh, it, it works fast and reactive. There are five types of no, uh, nodes which you can use. Uh, first is virtual component, which holds a component struct inside uh, virtual list, which holds a list of other nodes, uh, and uh, it will put it as a fragment into the DOM tree. Virtual tag, which produces a real DOM element, and virtual text, which produces a real text node. Um, and the, the last type of node is a, a virtual reference, which keeps a reference to an existing element. The last is useful uh, for embedding uh, JavaScript components uh, into a virtual tree. If JavaScript creates an uh, element, you could use reference to put it uh, directly in, into your uh, real rendered DOM tree. Uh, to create, to collect, and build a tree, uh, you, you could uh, use three approaches. The first is HTML macro. This is the common and the simplest way to create the tree. Uh, you could also create the tree manually, and uh, you could create a, uh, a parser and parse text, like markup, any markup like markdown, for example, and create virtual tree uh, from markdown representation to a virtual DOM representation and render it over the real DOM tree. And it also will uh, work effectively. Let's see the way uh, of creation of this framework uh, in a few slides. Uh, you should uh, remember that WebAssembly works in a sandbox and you have to write some integration code uh, if you do it uh, manually, mm, uh, it's impossible to go f uh, fast um, and create a good framework because uh, you should waste time for creating every bind uh, binding to JavaScript to send callbacks to JavaScript and uh, to, to call uh, web assembly from JavaScript. And it's, uh, it's a hard way. But, uh, but there is a sim uh, more simple way to use std web create, and I replaced that row approach with std web create. It provide, uh, provides browsers API and contains uh, awesome uh, JS macro, which helps you to create 
uh, callbacks, writing JavaScript code uh, into the Rust code. First uh, version of the framework uh, contains some JavaScript code, and now it, 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 it was replaced with cells and reference counters, and there is uh, no any JavaScript code uh, in the sources of the framework. HTML macro uh, was another challenge. I tried to parse, uh, at first I tried to parse whole tag recursively, but it exceeded uh, recursion uh, limits of the uh, compiler too fast. Uh, actually, it, it doesn't work. This ap approach doesn't work. And I replaced it with uh, separate rules for opening tag and for closing text, and add, uh, add some special uh, rules for parsing attributes. Uh, now, uh, mi micro implementation holds a stack inside. And it creates uh, an element for every opening tag and put uh, the last um, into the previous element on every uh, closing tag. And uh, in this way, uh, HTML macro collects and builds a virtual uh, tree representation using stack and uh, rules for opening, closing tags, and attributes. You can develop and compile front end application with Rust. Uh, nothing more, it works, but uh, there are some restriction, restrictions. First, some crates won't work in web assembly environment. Um, you, uh, you don't have threads, um, but uh, you, you could use web workers API, uh, I, but I can't embed uh, and use crates like Dian programming language because it uh, extensively, extensively uses threads and I can't compile it uh, into web uh, assembly. It, uh, it won't work in the browser, but maybe in another uh, web assembly environment, but not in the browsers. Uh, there, uh, there is no system API. It's not available, uh, but you could emulate some with uh, mscripton if you compile your application uh, with mscripton and some crates uh, will, will work with that. But uh, it takes some overhead for mscripton. Debugging is a hard topic, and debugger exists, but doesn't work properly. Um, you could use logging uh, to debug a business logic of your front-end application. And remember the thing that's hard to debug low-level cases. Uh, you can use uh, textual representation of web assembly for that, but it's a really hard thing to uh, debug low-level integrations uh, of with web assembly. What is the next I want to do with the framework? Uh, the first, I want to improve integrations uh, with JavaScript. I want to adapt and cover popular JavaScript uh, libraries, provide examples how to use existing JavaScript libraries because uh, JavaScript uh, world is huge and we could reuse uh, useful libraries uh, which exist in that world. Mm, I also want uh, to do some research uh, with typed CSS and I want to try add more reusable components to make uh, creating a uh, front-end application uh, simpler and faster by existing components, which you could download from Crates.io uh, and uh, use it in your application and, and put it into your templates as a component, uh, like front-end developers who use JS, uh, JSX and RegJS uh, use th that, uh, this approach, and you could use Crates and put components directly into templates. Benchmarks is the most demanded uh, top, uh, topic, but uh, I haven't checked it in the right way because it's uh, a little tricky, a little hard topic. Uh, I, I will do it in the future, and I believe it could hit JavaScript in, in many cases uh, because uh, web, uh, Rust and uh, WebAssembly uh, uh, don't use garbage collector and uh, other overheads. 
and I believe it, it will work uh, fast, but I, I, I haven't been uh, benchmarking on now. Um, and I can't answer the question, how fast uh, is it? Uh, I want to involve more contributors to the project. Uh, Thirty external contributors already sent their pull requests, and I've merged them. Um, you are welcome with your changes, too. And finally, I want to write guides for rookies and improve the documentation of the framework. Uh, maybe even I will write uh, a book or about using you and how to create your front-end application. Um, but uh, for today, you, you could see how to use the framework uh, in examples uh, in the repository of the of the framework, and uh, I, I believe for um, Rust de uh, developers, uh, it's uh, it's enough to start using uh, a new uh, tool. Uh, examples is a good teacher for uh, uh, learning something uh, something new. Uh, remember the things that Rust is ready for creating front end applications. It's real. It's true. You can do uh, this right now, uh, start, start for today, and um, you, you should do this. Uh, you should use this advantage. And uh, it's, it's really not, not hard. Uh, you could uh, use uh, your own uh, the Rust compiler you already have on the computer. And uh, start using these advantages from today. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, uh, could you could you have some questions? You could ask some, something about front-end development, about creating the framework, maybe using it for your projects. I will be happy to answer your questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so you stand in a, in a gigantic ecosystem of other libraries that do a similar thing with components. Is there a plan for integrating React components, say, or calling or embedding them in new programs? Uh, have, uh, uh, did you say, uh, say it about uh, existing uh, React com uh, components to in integrate existing components, right? Uh, I, uh, I haven't tried this, uh, but uh, I think you could, uh, uh, you could do it uh, with a uh, virtual reference uh, node uh, if you bootstrap uh, create the instance of the React component and put it into the virtual reference, I believe it, it will work. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, you yourself compared your architecture to something similar to React? Uh, over here on the right. <laughs> I, 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 don't, uh, I don't see who, here. who, who is speaking. Um, do you see the potential to build oh. something based on you, something similar to React Native? So you can use it to build uh, applications that are both web and native compatible. <laughs> I, I, I created this framework when I um, uh, I, I used React uh, JS, but uh, but I, uh, I I inspired uh, this a, a little, and I. Uh, uh, don't see so far to integrate <laughs> with uh, with that, uh, but but actually I created this framework uh, when I uh, have uh, some issues with Elm mm -hmm. uh, programming language, and uh, after that, um, when I created um, the framework which uh, works similar like Elm, I found that I could replace. Uh, templates uh, uh, which uh, looks like uh, which uh, which could work like uh, uh, React um, J uh, React JS um, template languages, but uh, language, but uh, it, it uh, integration with uh, with React it's uh, not a goal because uh, U framework uh, has own direction of um, uh, impro improving, 
And for example, uh, now I'm uh, considering to use actors, uh, which uh, I, 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 don't, uh, I, I haven't seen in, in other frameworks. I, uh, I want to try to use actors uh, to um, run uh, some tasks in parallel and you could uh, create your companies which will interact by m uh, message passing and um, with uh, your framework you could create really parallel app and safe application for the browser. Uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you have any advice for like selling, moving to a framework like this from um, traditional JavaScript frameworks for maybe bosses who have no idea what you're talking about? Um. It's uh, it's uh, it's maybe it's it's simple or, or not simple questions. I, um, uh, I I I don't know how to answer this exactly. But um, I at, at first I uh, don't aim the uh, goal to uh, to beat other uh, and uh, to compete with other frameworks. And uh, I see I see that. Um, uh, you has uh, own uh, own direction, uh, and for uh, in comparison with other uh, frameworks, uh, I think it could replay, uh, replace replace uh, JavaScript frameworks for uh, some cases. Um, but actually, you have to provide. JavaScript environment and web, uh, you, you should remember that that a web assembly lives uh, in in a sandbox, and uh, you have to use uh, you need to feed that sandbox with JavaScript API. And actually, uh, web assembly uh, web assembly frameworks uh, in any case will use uh, JavaScript API, and and I think. Uh, the good uh, future uh, position of the framework when you could create with you components and uh, embed it into existing applications, but add uh, some features which uh, is simpler to implement with uh, Rust, like uh, crypto uh, cryptography and other uh, high performance things. And you could create a component which uh, solves, uh, which will solve. Um, Issues uh, which we uh, uh, use it uh, fla flash uh, for for that. Uh, one short question, please. Uh, I hope it will be short. So the the main point is: Have you tried to make the backend swappable in the sense now it is a framework that manipulates HTML? It could manipulate any kind of tree, like do 3D rendering or a scene graph uh, or a set of web sockets or whatever. Have you have you taught the backend as a swappable thing? Um, uh, uh, the, one, uh, the one of uh, demanded f uh, feature for uh, uh, the framework is uh, is uh, creating s uh, something like uh, uh, server uh, server side rendering. And um, uh, and I, I think it, it, it's possible to uh, <laughs> to use framework in two uh, in two cases when you uh, could interact uh, directly with your uh, server or cr uh, create your application and compile it into uh, a whole uh, product which uh, serves your HTML like. Uh, PHP uh, does it, uh, or other things, and uh, they will um, uh, send uh, uh, sta uh, static templates, uh, which uh, will be genera generated, and when you uh, push some buttons, it will fire uh, events uh, back to the server when uh, the uh, components will be re-rendered again and uh, will return as a uh, static, uh, uh, static page. Uh, web page and um, uh, there are uh, uh, some cases and uh, I, I want to implement some interesting fe uh, features about 
better integ integrations with uh, ba uh, backends. Thank you.